What's going on everyone? It's me Marco from PhoneDog.com. It's day six of the Google Glass Challenge and this one is actually focused on the user experience right out of the box from Google Glass. So first of all, you get Google Glass in a giant box. It's 10 times bigger than this whole unit. Uh, I'm not sure why. If you ever think about making this product available for everybody, they have to rethink how they package these things because those boxes are humongous. They're about twice the size of an iPad box and it's this big. So after the box, you open the box and you find Google Glass. Now it's actually wrapped in this plastic sealant. Uh, I peeled it off two months ago when I got Google Glass. Yet again, you find Google Glass sitting in this kind of cardboard tray that outlines every single function of Google Glass. Talking about the eyepiece, the camera, the all the buttons on the side, the charger, and even the jawbone conducting speaker. Very nice layout. It's very simple. I really dig their design on how they place Google Glass in the box. So after you remove the Google Glass cardboard tray, you find a couple of things. First of all, you find this carrying case. It's made out of this Japanese microfiber cloth. It's very nice carrying case. It's actually really humongous to be honest. But inside is a plastic shell that protects the front piece of Google Glass when you travel. So that's pretty cool. And inside that you find a cardboard tray with a speaker that goes into your ear if you don't like the jawbone conducting speaker. Underneath the pouch you also find the micro USB cable. And this is a flat USB cable. I really do dig this. And the micro USB part is actually at a 90 degree angle. So it kind of gives it a dock when you charge your Google Glass at night. Also, you have your AC adapter plus this little pamphlet that has extra, I guess, nodes, nose guards. I think that's what they're called, nose guards or nose bumps. I don't wear glasses, so you might have to correct me on what these things are called. Now, moving on to Google Glass itself. Now, this thing is a super lightweight product. A lot of people are shocked when they actually pick this thing up and figure out it doesn't weigh very much. Uh, and a really cool part of that is the titanium band running all around Google Glass itself. It's super flexible. It's supposed to be durable. I'm not sure how to test it. And I don't want to break this up because, well, this is a very expensive piece of glass. It's $1,500. So um, I'm not sure how, I guess, bulletproof this thing, it's not bulletproof, how indestructible this thing is. I've seen a couple people who've already broken their Google Glass, including Tim Stevens. So again, I'm not exactly sure how strong this is, but again, they do encourage you to move this around just so you can get a feel of how durable Google Glass is. The same story is also for these nose guards. Now these are also made from titanium. Now they're designed to be pushed together or pulled apart so they can raise or lower where Google Glass sits on your face. Now the button layout is actually really, really simple. There's only a couple of buttons, really. There's only two buttons. One for the power, which is on the inside, and one for the camera shutter, which is right, I guess, maybe right where the band becomes a straight 90 degree vertical. Uh, and it's pretty simple, super easy. The only other touch point on Google Glass is the touchpad itself, which is basically right over here. This is where you can actually interact with the Google Glass software. Now charging is actually done pretty simply. There's a micro USB port right here. You can just plug it in onto that little dock or 90 degree angle uh, micro USB cable. And there you go, you charge it. It doesn't take very long to charge because the battery is only this big. So basically after you get this thing all charged up, you're gonna put it on your face. And it's again, pretty simple. Put it on just get a little pair of glasses. You will adjust your display right here. There's actually on a hinge and I am seeing the Google Glass. It's telling me it's 4.49 right now PM and I am seeing the Google Glass uh, page here. And I gotta be honest, the first couple days I had Google Glass, I couldn't see a darn thing. I kept calling Google asking, why can't I see my Google Glass screen? It's all blurry. They told me to change all these things and really nothing worked. And then I found out that the experience will be very different for every single person. I gave my Google Glass to a couple of my good friends and they were able to see every single detail in crispness and great detail. And I'm still looking at a blurry, muggy display and I couldn't really tell what was going on, but maybe give me two or three days and it was just fine. I think it's mainly because I'm not used to wearing glasses and I'm not really used to having something so close to my face. Now, the image itself looks like a 26 inch TV from five feet away. A lot of people actually think Google Glass is kind of like a full picture display, but it's only taking like that much away from my vision. And that's only if I look up. Right now, I'm looking straight at my camera lens, not at Google Glass. If I want to turn it on, now I'm looking at it and I look really stupid because I'm not looking at the lens. Now, I'm going to enlist the help of my iPhone to show you exactly what I'm looking at through Google Glass. Now, I'm doing a screencast currently from my Google Glass to my iPhone via Bluetooth. So now I'm just going to wake up Google Glass. I can either look up 
or tap it. So now it's 4.53 p.m. I can see OK Glass. And it gives me a couple options to do uh, different things. So I can say take a picture. And I'm not sure. If, yep, there we go. That's the picture right there. Uh, that's what I'm currently looking at. Let's go back to Google Glass here. We'll tap it and we'll see Google Search. We'll have take a picture. We can do a recorded video. We can get directions, message, call, video call. Listen, but it's actually Google Music. Um, and there's a couple other ones. These are all my glasswares. I have a timer installed on here. I have a recipe finder. It's really good, actually. And that's the same recipe finder, but just a different format. Uh, and again, it's pretty simple. Now let's go to my timeline. And the way to access that is going from that store or that area right there. You can actually go left and right, and you see all these timelines. So you have, uh, see, here's my news feeds. And I'll kind of scroll through here. You guys can see all the little cards. And these are things that I've done the past recent, I don't know, time. And uh, it actually stores up to 200 cards. And then it starts deleting them automatically. You, don't, you can't actually delete individual cards, but there's no end to all switch at all. Now going to the left, it actually goes to my weather application and I can actually see a forecast. And that's currently the forecast. It only gives me a three-day forecast. Now swiping to your left, it'll go into your settings. And this will kind of show you like your Wi-Fi status, your Bluetooth status, device info. You have your head wake up, which is basically your whole looking up at uh, different angles to turn off Google Glass or turn it back on. You have your head on detection, which is basically when you take off your Google Glass, it turns it off. And when you put it back on, the proximity sensor kicks on. Uh, screen lock is kind of like an Android password for Google Glass. I haven't tried it. It's still in beta form. The last one is a new one. It's called Wink for Picture. And it's basically exactly what it sounds like. You actually wink to take a picture. Now that's kind of creepy, to be honest. I turned it on and even my occasional like halt, like longer, I guess, blinks registered as winks because it only looks at one eye. There's no glass on two eyes. And you also have your volume controls. So overall, Google Glass is a very big learning curve from just your normal standard set of devices. If you use mobile phones, then you probably have a little bit better handle on actually using Google Glass. But as a first right out of the box experience, Google Glass, it, well, it can get some time getting used to. Mainly it's because you're gonna have some trouble focusing on a display so close to your eye. Google did do some clever engineering by making it look like a 26 inch TV from five feet away. So it's not the worst case scenario. Again, my name is Marco Hanna from PhoneDog.com. It's for Google Glass challenge. Make sure that if you have any requests for the challenge to leave them in the comments or send them my way on Twitter at phone dog underscore Marco. Also connect to us through Facebook at facebook.com slash phone dog and also on Google Plus. Make sure to like us on there as well. Again, my name is Marco Hanna from phone dog.com and I'll see you guys in the next video.